What up, guys? It's me, Gaming Guy TV here. <coughs> so, if you notice, I'm not in PowerPoint, but I'm not in the game either. And the reason for this is because I'm going to be talking about the Bay Trip. But I can't show photos because we weren't allowed to have our phones on us, so I couldn't take that many photos, and if I tried to do like a photo video of it, it would be about less than a minute long because I only have four photos from the entire trip and all of the photos that the teachers took have us in them and I can't show myself or any of my friends due to privacy reasons. So this may look like an audio to you guys but to me it's a video. I'm talking into a camera. What I found is instead of just talking into a screen where I can put different text elements that have things for me to say. <coughs> um, I prefer talking into a camera where I can see myself talk. Um, right now this shouldn't matter because you guys can't see it but I just turned the light on. Um, and what I'm doing right now is I'm either setting the video transparency to a hundred percent so that you can't see the video at all or I just converted the video to an audio file. Um, but what is the Bay Trip? So, we worked with the Bay Foundation, and by the way, the photos you see on the screen are photos of the bays. Bays just all around the US. I'm not focusing on a specific one because that would narrow down the areas in which I live, and we don't want to do that. Because that is dangerous for my safety, and for my family's safety. But what the Bay Trip is, is we work with the Bay Foundation, and yes, there is a specific bay that has a foundation, but again, I'm not saying that. We work with the, not we, my school works with the Bay Foundation, and they plan like a three-day, two-night trip to an island in the middle of that bay. We stay there, for two nights, learn about the island, learn about what the people do in the bay, learn about what is hurting the bay, things that could possibly help the bay. Stuff like that. As boring as that may sound to some of us, it was actually pretty fun. So, that being said, um, for me, um, this was only the second ever sleepaway thing I've ever done. And I can tell you from experience that the first 12 to 18 hours, I'm just in that mindset of, okay, a couple days left, then we can get to go home. By 10 a.m. the second day, I was fine. Like, the dining room we ate at, again, I don't think I can show photos. The school hasn't released them yet. I'll post another video if I can show any photos. That'll make the video more than a minute long. But, um, yeah. So, it was a ton of fun once I got my head around that. And the dining room that we ate in made me homesick the first two meals. I got very, very close to calling home on the first night. And in my mind after that, I'm like, look, if I do this tomorrow night, there's no use. All of the counselors will tell me that same thing. There's no use doing it the second night. Because the second night is the second night out of two nights. So you get to go home and see family the next day. Um, another thing you might have noticed is this video is most likely going up on a Saturday. Normally I film on Friday and Sunday. I don't have a squash match this morning, so I actually had time to film a couple videos. I'm updating Fortnite as we speak. But, um, I was tired enough last night that I fell asleep in a recliner at, like, 9. Uh, one of my friends, I'll have an interesting story about her later, she actually fell asleep on the bus ride. Like, she was stretched out over the four seats in the aisle. It was... The top half of her was on her two seats, and she stretched out across the aisle to reach over to one of the other seats. It was actually kind of funny. 
And this is the same girl that I asked to the dance, by the way, for those of you who know me in, uh, in real life. So, anyway, yeah, we went out to an island on the bay, and the bay foundation had places for us to stay. Um, there were three different groups. There was island number one, again, I can't say it due to location. There's island number one east, island number one west, then island number two. I was on island number two. So it was a group of about 28 of us. It was 12 boys, 16 girls. Um, boys had their own house, girls had their own house. But we were constantly on the first level. The first level of the boys' house was the kick-it room, as they called it. Um, that was basically a room full of a bunch of couches that we met in, like before bed. And the first actual meeting we had. This was school-related, by the way. This was not me and 28 of my friends that happened to go to school at the same school. But, and then the lower level of the girls' house was the kitchen and dining room. So that's where we ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There were only six meals, I think. So, let's see, there was dinner Wednesday... Breakfast, Thursday, lunch, Thursday, dinner, Thursday, breakfast, Friday, and you can sort of, you can't really count lunch, so it was five meals. Um, the trip was a lot of fun, so as we all know, back in August I went to Vegas and Grand Canyon. It was a blast. It really was. It was a ton of fun, and I speak that truly. It was a ton of fun. Um, I might be going back to Vegas in June, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. Another thing that we did in the Grand Canyon was we looked at the stars quite a bit. Um, we camped slightly outside the Grand Canyon in the middle of a field. This guy makes his living off of doing Airbnbs like that. And we stayed in one of his houses. There's very little light pollution. So you could see all the stars. But this was even more incredible. The first night, they had us walk about the island. We were staying on a smaller island within the big, big island. So, that happened. And they had us look around, they had us walk the island, look at the stars the first night, and then played a little game with all the pollutants for the bay. And then the second night, they had us look at the stars, and then they walked around the island and told ghost stories. Which freaked some of us out, and didn't bother a lot of us. Um, I do have to say that trip was a lot more fun than I expected it to be. There are some very funny stories that I could tell, but I don't think I can tell due to privacy issues and I don't want to change the names. Um, but what I can tell you is that the same girl that I asked at the dance, there were 50 jokes made about me and her on my island. just on my island. And then on her island, they're playing spin the bottle and she had to kiss another guy, and then on the bus tells me she loves me. So, I don't know. I am also drinking a nice cup of tea. Because it is 10.41am, and it is very cold outside, and I sleep in shorts and a t-shirt. So, I am very cold, and a nice hot cup of tea sounds very refreshing. But another thing they didn't do was they didn't they did not give us access to our phones. So, why is this a big deal, you might ask? Well, we always have our phones less than ten feet away from us. If we're out on the boat, going into the middle of the bay to launch crab pots, 
those phones could be miles away from us. And, you know, we would also lose our snap streaks and worthless garbage that a lot of adults don't care about, but we do. Um, the thing that freaked me out the first night was not having contact ability to my parents. Because when I did space camp years ago, years, not years ago, it was like a year and a half ago, but when I did space camp, yeah, I was 700, if not 800 miles away from my parents, not just a hundred something miles. Um, but I had my phone on me. If I was feeling sort of homesick, I could call home. I called home every night. I did stuff like that. And, um, you know, that kept me reassured. Now, space camp was like six nights. It was Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So it was five nights. Um, and I remember... Space Camp was the first day and a half. It took me till, I think, Monday midday to sort of break out of that so many days left, so many hours, so many nights mode. This one was, the Bay Trip was a bit quicker. But for the Bay Trip, we didn't have access to our phones. So if we got homesick, that's tough luck on us. We can't call home. Counsel the counselors wouldn't let us use their phones to call home. So, we were stuck. And I think what made the big difference is, um, essentially, that first day where we bust down to the port and then took, like, a nice hour-long boat ride to the island, that was the hardest day. Because that day, you're thinking, okay, I've got tomorrow, then the day after is when we get to go home. Well, Wednesday was the day we came down, Thursday was our full day, Friday we left. Wake up Thursday morning going, okay, I get to go home tomorrow. Um, that is why that first day is the hardest. It's because... For me, I pull up like a mental calendar. I have, you know, the first day we're there, the second day, and then the third day. And I just see it going by so slowly. I was chatting with one of my teachers on the boat, and I'm like, you know, when do we get our phones back tomorrow in case we want to, like, take pictures and stuff on the way back? And he's like, oh, we'll give them to you in the morning to charge. Well, the thing he didn't realize was iPhones, which all of us had, he had an Android. iPhones auto turn on when you plug them in. So, he was about to give us all detentions for having our phones on, and we're like, wait, wait, they auto turn on. Stop, don't give us detentions. You're like, oh wait, if they do, power them off. And then there was this one kid that was like Snapchatting and Instagramming and calling home and stuff like that. Um, he got detention, we didn't. So, one thing I can actually say about this was it was a good eye-opener to me because you know this was only the second ever sleep away thing I've done and this was more extreme you know no phones no electronics they didn't take my Apple watch which I don't have on now and I'm showing it to the camera which would be useless um, they had this principle called island time which was um, any clock within the foundation houses don't have hands on them, so you can never tell what time it is. My friend and I, which happened to be Max Dark Hunter, he was actually on my island. We were the hotshots because we had watches. Um, I happen to be one of those people that likes to know the time. My dad and I tend to plan vacations out a lot more than other people. Because whenever we go to, like, Ocean City, or especially Vegas, we have a set itinerary. Well, not Vegas, but 
Ocean City and a lot of these places, we have a set list of things we want to do, and we need to know what time it is to know when we're going to do it and stuff like that. They didn't want us to know the time. That would have bugged me, because I always know the time. And even in school, I always have a watch on me. You could trust the teachers to let you know what time it was, but I have a watch on me. Happens to be an Apple Watch, which school is none too thrilled about. But in the end, it's fine, because if they're going to ban Apple Watches, they're going to do it next year in middle school, and I'm going to be in high school. Um, sorry guys, I keep saying um, because I don't exactly know what I'm trying to say a lot of the time. What I can tell you is, um, they didn't have actual beds. They had mattresses, but there was plastic on them. So we had to bring a sleeping bag and pillow and stuff like that. Part of the fun of this trip to me was just sort of, you know, spending the time with my friends and, you know, seeing how people actually go crabbing for a profession. They have these big crab pots where you leave them in for a day or two and you can sometimes catch 10 to 20 per pot. Um, when we go crabbing, we drive an hour down to the nearest, you know, park that has a dock to the bay in it. And we launch crab traps, which can only fit like one. And, you know, professionals use fish for bait. We use chicken necks and stuff like that. Um, but that was really neat. It was also just neat getting to, you know, meet new people. One of the new kids in our grade, to his point, wouldn't have known who I was if it wasn't for this trip. I sort of knew who he was. Um, it is much easier for us to learn the names of the new kids than it is for the new kids to learn the names of us. And that is because there are ten of them and there's like 107 of us. So, for us, it's, you know, we know all the 107. They, we just have to learn 10 more names. But for them, it's in reverse. They don't know anyone. They sort of know the other new kids because, well, they met them at the new kid orientation and stuff like that. But especially if they're coming in from other schools and stuff like that. It's hard. I've never done it. Um, I can't say I want to do it, but... You know... Stuff like that. Um, and this trip was just a ton of fun. I'm so glad I convinced myself that it was a good idea to go. As soon as I got on that island, I'm like, oh no, this was not a good idea. I'm going to highly regret this, you know. This is going to be the longest four days ever. Not four days, the longest three-day, two-night trip I've ever done. You know, stuff like that. By 10 a.m. Monday morning, I'm like, eh, I got this. You know. I'm having fun. So, anyway guys, I've been talking for long enough. I can't actually tell how long I've been talking for. But, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.